the third and final part of this three-part video series on the 6L80 displacement on demand torque converter clutch and HP tuners is going to focus on HP tuners. So in this video, we're going to go to the HP tuner site, download some of the software. I'm going to show you the MPVI2, which is their piece of hardware that you utilize. Uh, we're going to use a 2016 Silverado, and we're going to pull information from it. And we're going to modify a few parameters within that the transmission software, something that is commonly done with uh, uh, out there in the shops that technicians do. And then we're going to go ahead and write that information to the vehicle and hopefully give you a, a little bit of an introduction to the HP Tuners software. So now we're at this 2014 Silverado, and we're going to look at what it takes to get HP Tuners to work with the software on this transmission. So here we go to hptuners.com, and we can learn a little bit about how the HP Tuners stuff works. One important area that you want to go to and, and cruise and learn a little bit is their forum. Their forum has got a wealth of information. If you have a question, likely somebody's asked and it's been answered in here. So set up a little user ID and go to that forum. Also going through the uh, homepage, you can see the MPVI2. That's the piece of hardware that you'll get. If you click on this, you'll see where it says MPVI2 and you want to purchase it. You can purchase it with the Pro Features or without the Pro Features. It's $300 without the Pro Features and most people will be fine with that. The Pro Features will give you the ability to plug in this little adapter on the side. You can see a picture of it here with wires. And that allows you to feed extra inputs to it. Like if you have analog inputs you want to record. In, trans in the transmission world, let's say for example we put a transmission line pressure transducer on the like a pressure tap or something like that. We could feed that information into it and the scanner portion of this tool could log it for us. But for, like I said, for the uh, what we're using here, we're just going to say no pro features. And then credits. The credits are what's going to allow you to program a vehicle. Now, the neat thing is the software, the editor and the scanner, you can download load that for free. And um, as long as you got the hardware, you can read information from the modules and you can use this as a scanner for free. There's no cost to that. So really, for $300, you get a really good scanner and data logger, this little button right here, you can set it up so that it'll log, or you can just do it with the USB cable. And um, you could drive down the road, log your scan data and your information. The, the scanner has bi-directional controls, like in transmissions, we can make it shift, we can operate solenoids, we can clear adapts, we can do a lot of stuff with it. So it's actually a pretty beneficial tool. Um, but if you ever want to program a module, you'll have to purchase credits for that vehicle, and it stays with that vehicle. So. How much are the credits and how many do you need? They're $50 uh, for a universal credit. If you scroll to the top under vehicles, you'll actually be able to learn what, like here, Chevrolet, if I scroll down, they got a lot of vehicles that you can program. So these are all the compatible vehicles with HP tuners. So you can see this one here is a Silverado 07. Basically, I'm, I'm on this line right here. 07 um, to 2015. Silverado 4838-6062, it takes two credits. So with two credits, I can get into the ECM and TCM, and I can change the software, and it'll cost me basically $100. Once you buy the device, you don't, all you have to do is buy credits from there on out. It's not like you have to rebuy this. So every time you're using this, if you are going to program a vehicle, you figure out how many credits you need, you buy that many, and then you, you do the transaction. You can do it right out of the program for uh, HP tuners. So, like here, a, a couple credits plus uh, the no pro features MPVI2 would cost $400. And then from there on out, you'd only just need to buy the, the credits. Once you install it, there'll be two programs added to your machine. There's going to be the VCM editor and also the scanner. The VCM editor is what you're going to read the tune from and you're going to write. And the scanner is what you're going to use as a scan tool where you can log and you can test drive and, and look at all your PIDs. And, um, and see what you're getting, and may basically see if what you're programming is uh, you're getting the net result or what you want out of it. So I'm going to go ahead and hook this thing up, and we're going to go through and go through the process of uh, pulling information off the vehicle. Okay, so I turn the key on, and I got my um, MPVI2 plugged into the diagnostic link connector, the OBD2 port, and I'm going to go up to Flash Read Vehicle. First, you need to gather info. And it's going to take a look to see what modules are available to pull information from. Now, if all you're doing is tuning the, compute, the, the ECM and the TCM, you don't need to pull information off things like body control, chassis control, 
the FSCM or anything like that. So if you have extra modules, this one only has two that shows up, the ECM and TCM. If there are other modules that show up and you don't want them, make sure you click do not read on it. And although this can be changed later on, if you decided to read a module that you didn't want, and then you go to purchase credits to upload software to the computer, and uh, it's gonna make you pay more potentially. You're like, oh, okay, well, there's two credits for the ECM and PCM, but it's another one or two for the brake control module, another one for... So you can take those modules off later on, but just don't read them now and that way you don't have to worry about it. So I'm gonna go ahead and read both of these. And this will take a few minutes each module, so you know, have a little coffee break or go to the bathroom and come back. You see, immediately comes up with a, a dialog box to save it. So if I say um, 104 OE, meaning it's not modified, and then now it opens the tune file. Every time you open the editor, it's gonna open up this, uh, whatever you had open last. And they do that because a lot of these tuners are modifying something small, test driving it, and then making a tweak so they don't have to sit there and reopen it, it just opens whatever was open last. As I mentioned before, there's a lot up here, but if you go under edit and under view and select basic, and it's gonna say, yeah, close the window, then open it before changes take effect. But it does kind of take a lot of it out, so that way it's not as complicated. But like I said, there's still a ton of stuff. But this is in the basic view. And if under fuel, you go to the lean fuel savings. Well, you know, I mean, here's an example. Under displacement on demand, you could just turn it on and off. Where if under advanced view, under the... Uh, the same section that would cover DOD, I have all these parameters. So if you leave it enabled, you can change oil pressure thresholds and um, you know throttle positions and blah, blah, blah. But if you look under here, there's no setting for like gear. Like you can't prevent it from operating in a certain gear. Um, so that's a, if they did, I, I don't know, I'd probably leave it on there. You know, if they just had it operating in fifth and sixth gear or something like that. But either way, just it's as simple as doing that. Disable. <laughs> so it's done. Um, and then on the transmission side, you click transmission. We've got under general, you can pick if it's an automatic or a manual. You can adjust your gear ratios. One thing HP Tuners has that's really nice, and I'm not going to try to get into all the different things, but they do have under their tools, They've got calculators and uh, uh, unit conversions. Under that unit for conversion, you can do your tire sizes and calculators, figure out RPMs. It's really nice. But um, like I said, I don't want to get into too much of that. We're basically, a focus on the torque converter clutch operation. So you got shifts, shift scheduling, shift pressures, shift timing, and then we got the section for torque converter. First, I guess let's talk about the slip. Dave, we, we've got, right now it's set up from the factory, it's minimum slip with the air conditioning on is three RPM. And that's where some people will set that to zero. I'm gonna leave it at three. Uh, then with AC off, they have the desired slip at 20. A lot of people will zero those out. The way you can do that is you click on this box in the corner and it highlights everything. You put zero in there, and then you hit the equal sign and every box becomes zero. For even disable, if you did have DOD enabled, you can adjust the slip that they'll allow. You can see the slip is higher with DOD enabled and they're trying to eliminate some of the vibration or pulsations that travel through. Yeah, if you disable DOD, you really don't have to mess with that. I know a lot of people will go in there and they'll still change that. So the, the desired slip, they, you know, they might change it to zero. But like I said, if your DOD is disabled, it's never gonna reference one of those tables or charts anyways. All right, now I'm gonna go to the apply release tab. We've got all these different patterns. We've got normal, pattern A, pattern B, hot mode, tap up, tap down, and tap up, tap down, hot. If I click apply, and this is gonna be first through fourth gear, I got a separate button for fifth and a separate button for sixth. You could take a look that they actually apply the torque converter clutch at 10 miles an hour all the way up to 37% throttle. 
and then they'll even apply it at uh, 16 miles an hour at 100% throttle. So you get to see the speeds at which they apply these. Now what a lot of techs will do is they will highlight these three. Some will actually disable it in fourth too, but I don't think I would do that. And since this is TCC apply speed and not a pressure or slip speed or anything like that, just speed, I change that to, or you, you can change that to 318. That's kind of the max. Hit the equal button, and that way every one of these um, first, second, and third, it's never going to hit that speed, so it's never going to apply the torque over the clutch. You can highlight the whole thing and copy it, and then when you go back to pattern A, for example, you can highlight it, and then you can shift insert, paste it. Well, okay, shift and search didn't work. Hit the paste button. <laughs> but then that basically transfers over. So that way, if you're in the tow haul mode or you're in normal mode, your torque of your clutch will not apply unless you're in fourth gear, and it just keeps the shift speeds there. You can tweak your shift speeds if you feel you need to. Same thing, the fifth and sixth, I, it would just leave by itself. Uh, they, I went and changed the programming on that, and I think a lot of people just leave that stock. Full throttle is kind of interesting. Under full throttle, they actually do show tor torque over clutch application speeds in first at 19, second at 37, and so forth. Um, I think a lot of people will, they change that to 318, and then they change the first release to 317. So it basically prevents the torque over clutch from ever locking up at full throttle. I don't know if I would mess with that. If I, you know, um, you could try and see how it drives. But I know a lot of people say they do it, and some people say they don't. Okay, so one of the things we talked about is if you adjust your slip speed to zero, that sometimes you can't even achieve zero. And that's where a lot of people go through and they'll modify their, their uh, slip RPM air map, or their, uh, their basically their apply pressure ramp. So this is apply pressure, and they look at the slip RPM air, and this tells the computer what to do, how much pressure to add if you've got a certain amount of slip air. So if you highlight the whole thing, and, um, oh, by the way, here's a little tip. Like a lot of times when you open these up, it's in a format like KPA, and you might not be a KPA person, you might be a PSI person. If you click on this little section next to it, it switches all the different units, which I find very handy. But like if I want to increase this 10%, I could put 1.1, oop, get out of there, postpone. I could put 1.1, and hit multiply, and it raised everything up there 10%. So I didn't have to individually change all the cells. Yeah, and of course you can click individual cells and say, okay, I wanna change that one 1.2%. 1 and when you, the, the histogram that you got on the side is pretty slick because it shows uh, the, the graph and it should be relatively smooth. If you have something that's kind of out of the ordinary, it might create a weird mountain or a peak in there. Like if I make this one somewhere in the middle, let's say if I make it 22, you could see where that has a weird spot right there. You're like, wait a minute, that's not supposed to be there. My, my mouse button sticks. And if you highlight it, it points, oh, okay, that's where it's at. And then you fix it. I could just undo it, I think. There we go. All right, so that is what some people do. Uh, now, of course, some of this just requires do a modification, do a test drive, do a modification, do a test drive, and see what happens. Under the transmission diagnostics, that deals with things like your, your DTCs. You could turn them on and off. I don't recommend any of that because you're going to want DTCs to help you diagnose things. Now, if you're doing a swap or modification, like I've heard of people using uh, turning the input speed sensor information off on a... Um, like a, a later model, 4L60E, that uses a turbine shaft input speed, you basically have to ignore that and not set a DTC if you're using an older transmission in a newer vehicle. That's a little different because if you're going in there and saying, hey, don't turn a light on, don't report on it, um, but there is a problem, that's kind of hiding a problem, right? Same thing with engine diagnostics. You can go through and kind of, the people on the, they're going to modify the engine diagnostic stuff are the ones that are uh, souping up the engine and they need to, like you might have an idle air issue or something like that, that won't be able to get resolved. So they'll have to go through and tweak that 
information. Oh, oh by the way, yeah, there's, there's one more thing I can point out. I didn't do many uh, modifications, but let's say if I save this as, because this is the OE, so I'd want to save this as the tune file. You don't want to save over your OE file because that's got your original setup there. And now I'm like, okay, well, what did I change? If I go to my compare, I can, I can do a comparison. Open compare file, and I could pick the file I want to compare it to. And anything that's got a little bit of difference, you can see here, this TCC apply ramp, it's got kind of a shading, it's green. I got these three windows. If I hit this button that says show differences, it tells me how it's different. These numbers are small because it's only how much different it is between the two. This shows me the compare file, and um, that shows me the file that I've got. So this is what I, I um, this is the, the file that I'm, the OE file, basically. This is the one I modified, and this is the difference between them. So I think it's kind of neat that you have the ability of opening that up and looking at that. The comparison log gives you information also on what you've changed. Pretty neat. HP Tuners, it goes in deep. You could tell they listen to the users and they modify the software to give the, to adjust it as needed. If I click right to vehicle and I can write my calibration to my ECM and TCM, and I hit right. Hit right even if I'm wrong, you know what I mean? So this is one of those things where if you're if you go through and you do this and you test drive it and it doesn't quite work out very well, uh, you can always go back to the original file or you can just tweak it. So a lot of these people that are builders with the transmission side of things, they just have their stock changes that they do on these and um, just apply it to every transmission, every 6L80 that they overhaul, especially on these stock configurations where it's like, we just want to disable DOD, we want to remove torque converter clutch application to later gears and maybe change the slip speed. So it's pretty simple. Really, when you think about it, it's, uh, for $300 for the tool, for the, the um, MPVI2, and then a couple... $100 basically for the credits to modify this vehicle. Now some vehicles, newer the newer they are, the more credits they need. But you know, a lot of vehicles are only two credits. So $100, vehicle, $100 to modify a vehicle is not much. And, um, and for $300, the tool, the hardware to do this, and the, the, the scan tool side of things, just remarkable. And uh, I would definitely say, even if you don't plan on tuning, heck, I'd get it for the scan tool feature. It works on a lot of different vehicles, and the bi-directional controls are really good. There's a lot of configuration involved with the scanner, so I don't want to necessarily get into that now. The stream has already gone pretty long. But you can see when you open it up, um, the default layout is going to be there. And as soon as you hit this button that says Start Scanning, we'll actually start pulling information in, and it will... Um, it's detecting the network that it's on right now, pulling in all the different PIDs that it can monitor and read, and uh, then it starts collecting information. You got graphs. Uh, I turned off, it had the gauges. I don't know, I'm not a big fan of the gauges. But yeah, you can go through and modify all this. One neat thing with the gauges, or the, the graphs, is you can put four different graphs onto one graph. So in reality, this has got five graphs, but I can put four things in each graph. So I can do quite a bit. Under controls and special functions, these are all the different transmission functions I can do. I can turn clutch solenoids on and off, high-speed drivers on and off. I could control the gear, first gear, second gear, third gear. I can engage the torque converter clutch. A lot of people, when they run these on the dyno, they'll you know put this thing in like fourth gear, and then they'll lock the torque converter clutch up, so that way they're getting a um, and, you know an accurate reading for their horsepower curves and stuff. Even though this doesn't have a one-to-one -one ratio. It's still, they can lock it so it's not shifting through gears and they can, they can move it through the different positions and um, in different loads and monitor air fuel ratio and so forth. So, so that concludes the three part video series. Uh, in part one, we covered displacement on demand. In part two, we covered torque converter clutch operation. And in part three, we covered the HP tuners, some of the basic fundamentals, the, the basic side of things there. So if you have any special requests or any comments, please feel free to comment below and give me some ideas for some other videos I can do related to HP tuners or the 6L80. Thank you for watching.